winter of 1920. And the war rages on. The Turks are spread thin against the Greeks, and the Greeks are just waiting for an opportunity to break through towards Ankara. The Georgians still hold on, and they may have to shorten the front in order to survive one more season. The Armenians were unable to destroy a Turkish division in the mountains. Turkish nationalist weapons purchase. And the Turks received two additional replacement points. Next event, evacuation of Crimea. The White Russians are evacuated across the Black Sea. White Russian forces are placed on or adjacent to Constantinople inside the international zone. They cannot stack with any other imperialist unit. Rangel's Russian White Army arrives at Constantinople. There's a chance it might fight with the imperialist forces and there's a greater chance that it may continue and be relocated to North Africa. We roll 1d6 to see its fate and uh, if Balikashir or Bursa would be Greek controlled there would be a plus one die roll modifier but that's not the case. On a modified die roll of one the White Army is withdrawn. On a 2 through 5, they remain in or adjacent to Constantinople for one more turn. But on a modified die roll of 6, the White Army reinforces the Greek Army, and they can operate freely as allies of the Greeks. So we roll 1d6, and the roll is a 4. They remain near Constantinople for one more turn. Turkish nationalists receive two replacement points for the weapons purchase event, plus four for their regular allotment for a total of six replacement points. And they purchase two cavalry divisions and two supply columns. The Turks want to concentrate their offensive power against the Armenians to try to knock them out of the war as soon as possible. Cavalry division is placed in a second supply column, is placed in Erzurum, and the remaining cavalry division is placed in Trabzon. The Turks place a supply column in Afyon. The Bolsheviks receive two replacement points, and they will use both to try to subvert the Georgian irregulars. First, they go for the Irregulars that are 60 miles to the southeast of Sujumi. Only on a 2 through 5 will they be eliminated because they cannot change sides. So a 1 result will be a no effect. The result is a 3 and the Irregulars are eliminated. And now they try the same with the other group of Irregulars. Roll 1d6, and here the roll is a 1, no effect. Now the Georgians spend their replacement point, and they purchase a regiment of Irregulars, which can be deployed anywhere in Georgia, they seal the gap. The Asadis have one replacement point, but nothing to recruit in their pool and no irregular units on the uh, revolutionary side to subvert. So it's the Armenians' turn and they receive five replacement points. And they purchase three irregular regiments and the two remaining points are wasted since there are no Turkish nationalist irregular forces to subvert. 
Sensing an impending attack in the north, the Armenians placed one of their irregular units in the northern end of the front and another near Erzurum. And finally, in Van, they deployed the 3rd Regiment of Irregulars. Now it's the Greeks' turn and they have four replacement points. They purchase two supply columns and two cavalry brigades. And all units arrive in Smyrna. First to move, the Georgians. The Georgians are down to one infantry regiment defending Sujumi with the help of French naval gunfire. Their line is extended and the only way of reinforcing Sujumi is by shortening the front. So they move in their second infantry regiment into Sujumi. They shift their two irregular units, moving them in a northwest direction. Another irregular unit also is deployed to the middle of the line. Finally, the 1st Reserve Infantry Division falls back to Tiflis. The Georgians conduct no attacks. On to the Asaris. Having witnessed the Georgian withdrawal near their sector, the Asaris cannot do much else, and they remain put. Now it's the Armenians' turn. The Armenians have noticed the concentration of Turkish forces in their front, so they decide to shorten their front to more defensible positions. An irregular unit marches to reinforce the Armenian forces in Van, and the Armenians fall back to a mountain space to shorten the line. The Armenians have supply columns that are ready to support any defense in the south. They now move their supply column in cars into Sarikamish, and the irregular unit in Sarikamish is now moved one hex to the southeast. That concludes the Armenians' movement. The Armenians decide not to make any attacks. Now to the Greek front. The Turkish rebels near Eskishehir make a dash to the east to try to reach Ankara, spending all their movement allowance and almost making it there. The Turkish supply column at Afyon cannot support the 15th Turkish division in its southernmost position. So the Greeks will concentrate forces against that Turkish division. The Greek 3rd Infantry Division moves into position. The Greeks also bring one of their newly arrived cavalry brigades. And they also bring their newly arrived 2nd Infantry Division. Further to the north here in Smyrna, the 12th Infantry Division moves in to seal the gap in the northern front. Greeks move two of their infantry divisions from the middle of the line north adjacent to Balikashi. The remaining cavalry brigade in Smyrna joins the line. The Greeks send one of their recently arrived supply columns to support the attack in the south and the remaining supply column to support a possible attack in the center of the Turkish lines. Now to the Greek combat phase. 
start with the attack against the Turkish 15th Infantry Division. 12 versus 4 factors. 3 to 1, but because of the rough terrain, it is reduced to 2 to 1. However, the Greeks add a supply column, bringing back the odds to 3 to 1. In addition, the Greeks throw one of their two air support markers. The Turks will not use theirs, so we roll 1d6 on the air support table with a plus one die roll modifier. The roll is a four modified to a five, and the Greeks gain one column shift to the right. The attack is resolved under the four to one column. We roll 1d6. The roll is a five. The Turks lose three steps. The Greeks, none. The Turkish 15th Division is destroyed, and the Greeks advanced into the vacated hex. So far, so good for the Greeks, for now. Now to the attack in the north for Balikesir. The Greeks have a total of 11 combat factors, the Turks 4, so that's 2 to 1. However, the Turks are defending in clear terrain, but there's a city, so the odds are reduced to 1 to 1. However, the Greeks will spend a supply column to increase the odds to 2 to 1, and the Greeks will add their air support marker to the fray to try to increase the odds to 3 to 1. However, the Turks use their air support marker also. And we have to roll for both sides on the air support table. This time, the Greeks luck out. A 1, no effect. The Turks, a 5. They gain a 1 column shift to the left. And the final odds are 1 to 1. We roll 1d6. The roll is a 4. The Greeks lose 2 steps and the Turks, 1. Turkish infantry division defending Balikasir is reduced. Greeks eliminate their reduced infantry division and reduce the 9th. So the Turks still hang on to Balikasir. The Greeks still have some fighting them. And they want to occupy the hex occupied by the 9th Kafkas division in order to gain an additional hex with which to attack Balikasir in the next season. So they will attack with four units, three infantry divisions and a cavalry brigade. And they start at eight to four, two to one. But because the Turks are in rough terrain, it is reduced to one to one. However, the Greeks also use their remaining supply column to bring the odds back to two to one and the Greeks need a four through six to cause the defenders to lose two steps and gain that ground. So we roll 1d6 and the roll is a four, just enough. The Turks are eliminated. The Greeks reduce one of their infantry divisions and occupy the hex. That's the end of the Greeks' attacks. And the Turks falling back. Now it's the Turks' turn. The Turkish 12th Infantry Division moves into Ankara. If by any chance the White Russian Army of Pyotr Rangel comes to the Greek side, there are no Turkish forces between Constantinople and Ankara. The Turks don't have any forces to spare either, so they will redeploy their forces on the Greek front with no attacks during the season. The first division moves into Balikesir. The Turks have to fill a gap in the south and their reduced 60th division has that duty. Meanwhile, Mustafa Kemal, currently at Bursa, will strategically move to Erzurum, 
where he will lead the Turkish forces in the upcoming spring of 1921. The Armenians have deployed in the mountains more than one unit. Perhaps the Turks, in wanting to outflank their mountain position, see a solution by attacking in the north. The Turks move, the recently arrived cavalry division up to the line. The Turks also move their first cavalry division to join the 3rd Kafka's infantry division. To support the attack, the Turks move a supply column across the river into the mountains. And to follow up in the next turn, they bring a second supply column. Now the Turks need to fill the line in the south. They move their second cavalry division forward, and they also move their two infantry divisions to fill the line in the south. Finally, the cavalry regiment Seft. Seft. And finally, the Turkish Cavalry Regiment moves next to Van. The 14th Cavalry Division at Eskisehir moves to attack the rebels. Now to the Turkish combat phase. There are no Turkish attacks in the Greek front. The attack against the rebels is a 5 to 1 attack, with all considerations taken. We roll 1d6. The result is a 2, a bloody exchange. Each side loses 2 steps. The rebels are finally gone, and the Turks reduce both of their units. On to the Armenian front, and the Turks launch an attack in the mountains in the north. 13 factors attacking, 2 defending. We start at 6 to 1. With the mountains, it is reduced to 4 to 1. But the Turks will support the attack with a supply column, bringing the odds now to 5 to 1. At 5 to 1 odds, any roll but a 1 will ensure that the hex is occupied by the Turks. The Armenians, however, could use one of their support units to reduce the attack to 4 to 1, which would give them a 33% chance of retaining the hex. And the Armenians decide to use one of their, their supply columns. And now we roll on the 4 to 1 table. But the roll is a 5. The Armenians suffer 3 step losses. They are eliminated. The Turks suffer no step losses. Their supply column is spent and they advance into the vacated hex. And now the Turks have three hexes from which they can launch an assault on Sarikamish. Now it's the Bolsheviks' turn to try to finish off the Georgians. The Bolsheviks could launch another assault on Sujumi. However, with difficulty, they would be able to muster 2 to 1 odds. And those odds would be reduced to 1 to 1 because of the French naval gunfire. Georgia falls also if Tiflis falls. And Tiflis is only being guarded by one infantry division in clear terrain. And there's a one column shift because it's a city that's being defended. So the Russians will attack Tiflis this time. They begin by moving their cavalry division in place. And they bring their other cavalry division, the 12th. Supply column will support the attack and moves also. And the Bolsheviks also bring their 5th cavalry division. And as secondary attacks, in case that attack fails, the Russians move forces 
to concentrate on the irregular Georgian forces that are manning the line. The Russians shift their attack from Sujumi to the Hex, which is adjacent to the east, and place their reduced infantry division in the coastal Hex in front of Sujumi. On to the attacks. The Russian forces now attack Tiflis. Eight combat factors versus four. Two to one because Tiflis is a city, the odds are reduced to one to one. But because the Bolsheviks brought their supply column, the final odds are two to one. But the Russians still have something else to add to the fray. It's their air support marker. Let's see if it has an effect. We roll 1d6 and add 1 because it's unopposed. The result is a 6 air superiority and 1 column shift is applied to the right. So the final odds are now 3 to 1. We roll 1d6. The result is a 2. Each side loses 1 step. So Tifli still holds on and the Georgians are still in this fight. Bolsheviks now attack the irregular forces in the mountains east of Sujumi. This attack is resolved with all things considered on the 5 to 1 column. We roll 1d6. Roll is a 5. The Georgians suffer 3 step losses. They only have 1. Soviets suffer no step losses and advance into the vacated hex. Now to the next attack on the irregulars. This is another 5 to 1 attack. The roll is a 3, 2 losses for the Georgians who only have 1 step. The Bolsheviks suffer 1 step, lost. It's the end of the Bolshevik attacks on the Georgian front. And the Georgians are no more a cohesive army. Georgia is about to fall. The Armenians have been outflanked in the north. And Sarikamish seems to be the next target on Mustafa Kemal's list. Will the mighty white Russian army of Wrangel enter the war on the side of the Greeks? And if so, can the Turks prevent it from marching into Ankara. We move now to 1921. Stick around for the next episode of The War for Turkish Liberation. This is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.